Say hello to Hurricane Lee, which is rapidly intensifying as we speak in the Atlantic Ocean. The National Hurricane Center now says this will become an intense Category 5 hurricane sometime over the next few days as it passes north of Puerto Rico. The storm will then continue westward into the southwest Atlantic before turning northward, but what about the east coast? Who needs to watch this storm most carefully? Hi guys, I'm John with New York Metro Weather and you are looking at Hurricane Lee, which is rapidly intensifying. Today is Thursday, September 7th. And this system has really gotten its act together over the last 12 hours as expected. It's continuing to strengthen as of this morning and it's starting to take on that classic appearance. It's in warm waters. There's not a lot of wind shear. The heat content of the water that it's in is really impressive. And the atmospheric pattern around the storm supports this strengthening over the next 12, 24, even 36 hours. And the National Hurricane Center says it will become a powerful hurricane very quickly. Actually sending a recon plane in as we speak, so we should get an update this afternoon. But if we look at the forecast, they're forecasting it to be a Category 4 within 24 hours and a Category 5 very quickly after that as it passes north of the Lesser Antilles and then Puerto Rico over the next couple of days. So rapid intensification of Lee. The system is then going to continue westward into the southwest Atlantic Ocean. And that's where we reference our super ensemble. I brought this up in the last couple of videos, but this is where all these different weather models that we know and love come into play. And if we look at what they're all showing over the next couple of days, decent agreement, right? There's still some spread as to whether it'll be on the south or north side of this envelope, but the storm continues generally heading north and then west. You'll see the system eventually head westward as we move into the weekend, and this is where the models start to diverge. Is it going to be on the southwest side of this, closer to the Bahamas, or is it going to be on the northeast side or somewhere in between? This is where most models are clustered, and this is where the NHC forecast lies. It's just continuing northwest and then bending a little bit to the west of the track. After that, you'll see the models start to turn north, and this is when our ellipse of possibilities grows significantly. Either the storm will be down here in the Bahamas, or it's going to be way up here in the Atlantic, which is a difference of thousands of miles. So there's still a lot to unpack here, and this is still six, seven days from now. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is there is still a lot of uncertainty about the future of Lee and where it heads after this weekend and into next week. Several of these models turn in the storm pretty close to Bermuda, too, which you can barely see, but it's in there and likely going to skirt at least some impacts from Lee. So why is a storm turning north? And what can we do to try to understand a little better what's going on? So hurricanes are very often steered by the pattern in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. This is several, several thousand feet above our head. And this, to the north of the storm, is a ridge, a ridge of high pressure. And the, the airflow around these ridges is clockwise, right? So it comes around the ridge like this. Lee is being steered this way because it's on the south of this ridge right so your airflow is like this it's spinning around like this lee is going this way and it can't go north it's blocked so it's steered off to the west initially and that's all fine and dandy and that's why we have great agreement on the models as to where it's going to go in the next five to six days but after that our ridge dissipates so there's still some airflow in this direction but lee is moving westward and now it's starting to approach the flow of a different kind of weather system a trough so their airflow here is this way, counterclockwise, around this low pressure system. So you have air flowing this way here, and then air flowing this way over here. So Lee is sort of stuck in between. So for a little bit, it slows down, and eventually then it gets caught in this squeeze play between this ridge, which is spinning air this way, and this trough, which is spinning air this way. So Lee is going to go right in between those two, and that's what the models currently suggest will happen, that it will it'll shoot the gap between this trough and this ridge and end up just off the U.S. East Coast. It might seem pretty simple, right? If we dive into what it means in terms of technicalities, there's a lot going on and a lot that can impact this forecast. So here comes Lee, right? You see it coming out of the Bahamas. Here's Florida for reference. Here's the Northeast Coast. And here's our ridge initially with your airflow spinning this way around it, directing Lee to the west. Here's our trough coming in across the Ohio Valley down into the East Coast. And you see it spinning down here. So your airflow here is westerly, right? It almost puts a wall up so Lee cannot go this way. Your airflow is this way. So Lee feels that it starts to turn northward, right? Our ridge is here, meaning it can't, Lee can't turn too far east because the ridge is blocking it. So it has to shoot this gap. But what happens when it does start to shoot that gap? Where is this trough located exactly? Where is this ridge located exactly? Because a small difference, west or east, 
will have huge implications as to whether Lee will impact the East Coast or they will stay out to sea. And you can see that the models are turning Lee to the north, but also hooking it fairly close to parts of New England at times in this forecast. And so what I'm trying to get at here is that the intricacies of this forecast are going to be really uncertain for a long time. Here's what one model, the European model, says Lee could look like as it heads towards the northeast coast. And it'll, oh, it'll go over some cooler waters. So you start to see some weakening. It's maybe not as intense as it once was down in the tropical Atlantic, but still an impactful system that skirts the coast of New England. Uh, this is just one potential scenario. But again, it's going to come down to the positioning of this ridge off the coast and the flow and positioning of this trough. Can this trough pull Lee a little closer? Will this ridge push it a little closer? Or will Lee be able to shoot that gap and head up out to sea? Those are all things that we're going to have to work on in this forecast. So if you live along the East Coast, anywhere from Florida to Maine, all you have to do right now is just keep an eye on this storm. There's no reason to panic. There is no reason to freak out. I know there's a lot of hype forecasts out there. There's a lot of people talking about this is coming into Florida. This is coming into Georgia as a cat five. That will not happen. What we know right now is that the system is going to eventually end up somewhere in this position about six days from now. What happens after that is still wildly uncertain. Most models suggest it will turn northward away from Florida and away from the southeast coast, but it's not impossible that it doesn't. Still, there is no reason to panic, and there's no reason to listen to these hyping fear mongers that are all over TikTok and Instagram and Twitter right now. This is still six days away in the world of weather that is an eternity, so we need to take this forecast very slowly. Now, if you are on the East Coast, though, know that there is the threat of this storm eventually impacting the area, and models right now suggest it'll stay right in this gap between the coast and way out to sea. So, with a storm tracking like this, let's say this model is correct, you'll probably still get significant waves and beach issues along the East Coast. Not a direct impact, but still enough uh, to cause some problems. And then you'd watch the system go up into Atlantic Canada eventually, uh, probably sometime uh, next weekend around the 15th or 16th. So still a very long way to go with this one, guys. And it's really most important to just remember that there is a lot to unpack here. Lee is likely going to try to shoot this gap between this trough in the east and this ridge out over the Atlantic. And we'll have to see where it goes. If you're on the east coast, just keep an eye on it. We'll be tracking it for you every day. Right now, there's no immediate impact or no reason to panic. Stick with us. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. Thank you guys so much for tracking this with us. And we'll be back with an update really soon. Take care, guys.